three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Between Two Fans. We are joined. Uh, it's Daniel Scott. That's me. Stevie P. Uh, we have got a absolute humdinger of an episode for you today. We've got the Boca, who played Wales. We've got the URC final. The Boca have also picked their squad to play versus Ireland. Yeah. Who's been snubbed? Who's in? Um, we, have this, we have the Super Rugby final this weekend, um, as well as England playing Japan. Um, which seems like uh, it's just a, a distant memory at this point. Then we move on to the Euros um, and what is happening. England currently playing now. You'll know the result of this already, but you know what is happening there. Who are the teams to beat? Um, a couple upsets happening in the tournament, but you know who's going to really progress to pass the round of 16. And then, of course, the Cricket World Cup. We've got the Pro Tiers lining up for their semi-final versus Afghanistan on Thursday morning, sharp 2.30 a.m., what did the Super 8, I think was the name of it, what did that entail? How did the Proteus get through? How have we always got the most stressful way to get to the final? Stevie, welcome. How are you? Yeah, tired. Still flipping, trying to catch up to sleep from watching the Proteus take how many hours to sneak past the West Indies into that semi-final. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough watch this this T20 World Cup. We'll talk a little bit about it later. But this whole like finishing a, a Euros watch long and finishing work at like hoppers eleven. By the time you're in bed, it's like hoppers twelve. You like tosses at like two in the morning, and you're like it's, it's too dangerous <laughs> to go to sleep. It's uh, it's been it's been a long week, and uh, it's going to get a bit longer on Thursday morning. But uh, Springbok season is back, so I cannot complain. I cannot complain. I can try, but it'll be pointless because it's just no, not that we, much to complain about. To be honest, we don't. We don't. And grateful just to be to be watching the proteas you know early in the morning yes but to be watching them at this stage of the tournament final four i mean it's the semi-final well, it's the, it's, I'll it's, never, it's the I'll stage never we always them. get to yeah i'll never forgive them for making me wake up i think it was three when we started that um when we played in uh, new zealand we played against new zealand all those years ago and i think it was 2015 and that that heartbreaking yeah. semi-final loss and waking up at three and watching until about like one hoppers one two in the afternoon and then losing so yeah. at least it's let, been two let, late nights that's been worth it Stevie, let's not bring in um those somber thoughts only only positive energy going into this podcast for those who are new we do a little prediction show around here and we pick three games um from the week to then um predict on for the weekend stevie Last weekend, um, and currently the score is 10-10. We're in a race to 15, and the loser will have to wear a sports shirt of the winner's liking. For example, I am thoroughly looking forward to giving Stevie an Arsenal shirt to wear for a couple of episodes, because that's what I intend to do when I get to 15 before him. It was 10-10 going, um, going into last week, and Stevie bet on Bulls Glasgow, Netherlands versus France, and the Euros and Proteus versus England. Um, let's start with Bulls Glasgow. We're not going to get too much into the game because we'll get there in a little bit. But Stevie, the end score, spoilers, was Glasgow winning that game, 21 points to 16, a five-point win. We actually predicted the same amount. We both went Bulls 8, and I allowed you to change. And Actually, no, it's a lie. I changed. I went one down to Bulls by 7. Which gives me the win. So I go one more up this week. Then we go to Netherlands versus France. We both went for a you know, high-scoring game. Myself, I went for the old Desmond 2-2. You went for 2-1 Netherlands. It ended with a humdinger of a 0-0, um, meaning that I got that, having predicted the draw correctly. You were a little bit unlucky because of that disallowed goal from um, Simmons. And then the last one of the week. So that takes an unassailable lead. So it's really 11-10 celebration time but let's move on to the last one Proteus versus England um, we beat this England this actually make a lot of sense by the way the more I'm looking at it how so okay well let, let me get it out <laughs> and then explain to me your why you're complaining and I'm glad it's a 2 lead now because you have an issue but South Africa beating by 7 runs my prediction was an 8 run win or 3 wickets yours was a 10 run win or 2 wickets so I mean 1 run off you got to give it to me there so I, I'm I'm very interested to hear your your complaints. No, it just doesn't make sense that I went with a bigger win via runs, but a smaller win via wickets. Like it's a bit of a weird kind of like thing. Let, 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 go, you know, it's it's kind of because basically we kind of basically what we're really trying to do is we're going like South Africa by five points. What does that look like runs? What does that look like in wickets? 
So it, it, it makes us look as if we've really analyzed things. If we reckon, like, well, you know what? If we're chasing, it'll be a bit closer. Have you not? Like, Have you not? <laughs> oh, <laughs> explains the scorecard. 11 10. Uh, it? Skulls. Okay. okay. It's big. Um, can I, can I, but, so so when we, when we lose, if, if, if you're off on Thursday, then I'm, I'm expecting a, a big apology because you've obviously put a lot of analytics into this. Um, I have seen your entire review of the Afghanistan history of cricket for the last 15 years and why, uh, where we can exploit <laughs> them. So I'm looking forward to that analysis as well. Yeah, absolutely and let's also just not try to apply logic to to cricket or, or sport for that for that matter um you know predictions or i mean maybe not in this occasion because in this occasion i was absolutely dead on but you know as a general rule um stevie let's start off first book game since winning the world cup what felt yeah. like five years ago um, Boca versus wales first half 13 14 up only one point difference you know a bit sloppy from the box giving away a couple penalties went up early um, but Wales getting a try back but the final score ending 41 points to 13 not conceding a single point in the second half um, first of all let's get your overall thoughts on the game then we can go into a couple talking points about the the newbies calling them yeah I think it was in in looking at retrospectively it was kind of the game we almost sort of expected to a certain degree um, I, mean, I think if you told me that you know, first game of the season against a team that has already played five matches this year, that the box uh, had some good moments, but then were a bit sloppy, a bit slow, a bit sluggish, and then sort of kicked into gear in the second half and kind of eventually ran away because on paper they were a fast period side. The scoreline and the way it kind of played out does make sense. Um, there is a lot of Tony Brown influence in that performance already, which has got everybody on their toes, very excited. Mm, mm, it sometimes mm, makes mm. me a little nervous in terms of how quickly we're going to be able to get this right. Um, yeah, are we and, in New Zealand? Yeah, you know, have we just flicked a switch and all of a sudden we are prime crusaders, like, you know, and, and we're going to be running in trials for fun. And how does this make us look, for example, defensively? And how does this evolve? Um, but I mean, we were running out from the 22. Um, we had some very interesting couple of wraparound stuff like that. We ever put it this way: there was evidently a change in the way we played with ball in hand, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. You know, is that going to be a similar thing against Ireland? Was this a trick? Was this us planting seeds of doubt in Andy <laughs> Farrell, saying, "Oh, yeah, we're going to have this expansive game plan." Meanwhile, we've got something else planned. So it was an interesting True. game. It was nice to see some of the newbies take their opportunities. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit over here. Um, um, but at the, same, at the same time, you know, class is permanent, and I thought some fantastic performances from you know the usual stars. Your um, the scrum was was pretty solid. Um, mm, mm, mm. Peter Step the toy was as good as you as you always is. Even Elizabeth was solid. Frank Mustard was solid. Uh, Jesse Creel mm. continues to be undroppable in that uh, thirteen position. So, so good. a lot of a lot a lot of new some new faces, but the old guard looked like the old guard as they were. Yeah. No, agreed. And you actually raised an interesting point there about, you know, the data that Ireland will have going into this World Cup and what to expect. And obviously, you know, there's a whole World Cup to, for them to analyze, you know, including the game that they played against the Springboks. But, you know, completely new, um, not completely new, but a, um, a, I guess, new look to, to some of the backroom staff, um, particularly, obviously, uh, in, in Tony Brown for attack. So they'll only really be able to work off this this Wales game. So is it a bluff? Is it um, a game plan that we're only going to play versus opposition that we're very confident in? Obviously, a struggling and young Wales side. Um, obviously, glad to have put them to bed. Um, so that'll be interesting going to see, obviously, the first Ireland test on top of everything else that's building up into that series. What type of game plan is going to come out? And does that correlate with what we saw here against Wales? Stevie, let's move on to the newbie um ratings and i would actually be interested to get you know, we'll just go um out of 10 and we'll start with edwell van der Merwe. um man of the match out of 10 noting your alliance the, for the listeners stevie's alliance fan so just take off like one okay so i believe in our player rating show he ended up getting i think it was an eight my player rating show afterwards um so that's probably I think about for right, but it's also one of those performances where I don't think he put a step wrong. You know, yeah. um, you know, you probably find you know could he have done more? Yes, in terms of if he had more opportunity, he could have run more. If he had more tackles to make, he could have made more tackles. But I mean, when he, he scored his do... try, he had to come to the middle of the park to receive yeah, it from to, the yeah, scrummy. He's bored. He's like, you know what? Like, just I'm sick of the shit. Just I'm give waiting it to me. for my debut try. <laughs> yeah. where, like, where can I get the ball? Yeah, like, he, just, he, just, he just walks over and says, "I've just." 
hit me. Um, yeah, no, we, 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 we're preaching about this Tony Brown, you know, attacking options, getting the ball out wide. And, Maybe and that is Tony scoring. Brown. Tony he Brown to, is reinvented the to come the first whole... receiver. <laughs> no, he's reinvented the entire attack there. He's now got wings running first receiver. We're going to see Oxford chair <laughs> down the wing. It's going to be next level. But the biggest thing about it is I wasn't surprised. Um, being a Lions fan, I've watched him a lot since. And he's been probably our best signing of the last few years. Um, number this season but previously I think that he's a player who I've long been saying should play for the box not just because he's your usual you know kind of wing with a scrum cap got a good step, but <laughs> well rugby such... looking to ban them ASAP yeah correct but he's just such a he's, he's, got, he's got a genuine all around game he's such a physical player I think that's something that people don't realise is that I've watched this guy it's sit second. down forwards if you've seen that mm. tackle he made uh, I forget who it was against but the player was basically diving over the trial line and he just yeah, grabs him and basically that? just said no and dragged him all the way back. I mean, the strength he's got. So mm -hmm. for me, he was always a spring mark and waiting and always looked the part. Um, I think that we, the, the rise that Kurt Lawrence had, had in the last 18 months could well have been Ed Van der Merwe. Um, not saying he's going to replicate that kind of um, uh, you know performance, but he for me, he's, he's looked like a spring mark for a long, for a long time and um, looked the, so looked so the part. I mean, if you had watched him on Saturday, next to a JC Creel or Maxwell Mapimpi, you struggle to say that he was the one on debut. No, absolutely. I I'll completely agree with that out of 10. Let's move on to Jordan Hendrickson, who started at 10, Stevie. Yeah, I think at first half where he struggled, um, and he looked, and I mean, maybe, and I'd be interested to know, obviously you were actually at the game and could see things a bit more sort of from a, 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 a wider perspective. I felt in the first half he was trying too hard, um, mm -hmm. I think he the nerves definitely got turned. There's no doubt about that, and I think he was trying. I mean, you saw that, that opening kick as well. It's not not one that you usually misses yeah, and, either. And I was and I was saying, you know, I, I would love to have seen what his performance would have looked like had he nailed that opening kick, um, mm. because I think that would have settled the stream straight into the game and said, right, cool, I've got my test points. I'm like now, I, now I can play. Yeah. But he looked like someone who was trying too hard, and there was a marked improvement in the second half in the 15 minutes, 15 20 minutes he did play. Um, where I think they basically just told him, relax, you know, we, you, you are a spring mark now already, you're going to go out there, just play your game, don't, don't complicate things. So I felt sorry for him because I think the occasion got to him a little bit. Um, I think the reaction people have had to him has been really, really poor. Um, I think that one criticism I will level towards, not just South African fans, but fans in general, is that we are so quick to slay players and bin players after a bad performance. So that's been a bit disappointing. Uh, out of 10, I'll probably give him a, a 5. Um, defensively, he was perfectly sound. He doesn't miss a tackle. Um, yeah. He had Mason Grady running at him, which is not exactly... Uh, I mean, it's like I mean, Andrew mm. Estes from a size point of view. Yeah. And I don't think he took a step backwards. So defensively, he was classed. He had a couple of decent... I mean, that one um, conversion up against the touchline was very good. Um, so yeah. he had some nice nice goal kicking. So good moments, bad moments, probably more bad moments. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think Listen, he's I mean, too worried. We, we, did, we did mention last week as well, he was quite a surprise selection at mm. 10. Right. He hasn't actually played as like that much 10. He's not like he's worn the 10 jersey the entire season for Lions and come into it off being like one of the best players in, in the URC. Um, so it's, it maybe also shouldn't come as much as a surprise, but I don't think anyone's said, or at least what I've seen, you know, he should never be wearing the shirt because I don't think that's the case. I think it may be a case, you know, trying a bit too much, trying to throw one out the back. I, when, when I saw him trying to throw in like post tackle out the back, I was just like, you know, Spring more flowers, don't do that. Maybe yeah. under Tony Brown. Maybe under Tony Brown. Maybe they but do. But it's consolidated. It's consolidated. Um, to be fair, you know, we're seeing a bit of a bit of difference, you know, a bit of money to work in there as well. So the creativity is there. Um let's let's quickly um fly through the rest, Stevie, because we've got a thirty nine man squad versus Ireland to get through as well. Yeah. Um Sashin Gomezulu. Uh for me. I mean, seven, eight out of ten. Um, didn't get a lot of opportunity with the ball in hand, um, yeah. so I thought that he defended very well and kicked for goal very well. I, I mean, I, a lot of people have, have absolutely losing their mind about him, and, and I'm getting I'm getting a lot of abuse because I am also losing my mind. But I thought that he didn't have as much to do as I think a lot of people make it seem. Um, I thought he, his, the 55 meter penalty is yeah. what what we've been waiting for from him. You know, he's since under 20 level, we know that we've got a genuinely world class goal mm, kicker potentially. Mm, mm. Um, in him, so you know, and, that, and I think South Africans get more excited about a good kicker than anything yeah. else because that, yeah. if we're talking about Springbok DNA, it's physicality and a good kicker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mornay yeah. Stain ends up with you know sixty plus caps for the Springboks, and you know, ball in hand. You know, you, I think it's fair to Listen, say a pretty Mor Mor mediocre rugby never, player. Mornay Stain has never thrown a flat cut pass in his life, nor has he ever thrown a chicken <laughs> wing. He also doesn't know what a chicken wing pass is. 
and yeah. he was a legendary uh, Springbok fly half. You know, that yeah. has always yeah. been the, 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 the premium. So yeah. that I think no, has got uh, everybody excited. Uh, I think he did have a couple of nice touches with ball in hand, but he, I think he only had about, I think two. I think he had one carry and one pass. If you look we, we, know he's, we know he's also very creative with ball in hand, yeah. right? So there so, is that side to him. Yeah. Um, That's why everyone, is, everyone looks at him as the, as, the, as the future because he's got the Pollard-esque ability to mm. kick for goal. He's got the mm. Marty Leibach kind of style with ball in hand, and he's got that physicality in defense as well. So he ticks every single box, and there's a yeah. reason. There's good reason to be excited about him. Yeah. I just always advise caution when we're talking about a 22-year-old because mm. he will not always be at that level yeah. he will have bad games and we need to understand yeah. that this kid has not actually played a lot of rugby at the professional level he's already had a couple of, of games where he struggled for the stormers so reason to be excited 100 percent. is he the finished product yeah. not yet and we need to allow him to become the finished product and then we'll be all be fine i think the exciting part is he's taking a very similar journey to what we saw damien villams to take maybe yeah. damien villas took a bit more um responsibility at the stormers than Sasha has at this age. And was age. three years younger. And yeah, at, well, yeah. I mean, but 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 at twenty two, I think Damien was now breaking. When, you yeah. know, well, he he had broken in. But the the point being is that he's that utility back. We thought Damien might have been a kicker. He, it turns out he isn't. You know, if you yeah. strap a Sasha boot onto Damien Willems, so you're talking about top three players in the world. Um, yeah. But you know, Sasha is he's. I can imagine him being in that box setup for a very, very long time. I don't because... think he'll leave it unless he really starts playing badly, to be honest. I think this is the start. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. You know, I think someone could draw and... Henderson might drop in and out. Sasha Fame and Zulu. Unless he has a really bad season, I don't think falls out of this box squad again. And we speak about, you know, legends in Mornay Stain. Half the reason is because he's got the bottle, right? Yeah. And Sasha and Gomezulu calling for the tee from 55 meters out on his debut, having just come on, that shows bottle. Plugs it straight through the middle with a couple mm. meters to spare. You know what I mean? This is like this. This is what you need from um, a kicker, not just a kicker, but a, 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 a good Springbok. So very, very exciting for him. Um, yeah, cool. Obviously, we won't see if, him again. We'll see him in Portugal. Probably that's the rest of it for the new yeah. Season. No, anyway, it, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But we, we can leave it. At, we can leave it at that. Um, yeah. Evan Rose, very strong carry. Almost got to the line, but a couple, mm. a couple miss, um, mishaps or, or penalties given away. Stevie, um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Evan Ruiz is a player who I think still has all the talent in the world, but still has a lot of growing to do. Um, it's probably, for me, about a 7 out of 10. I think he carried very well. I mean, knock on was a bit frustrating and, and those kind of moments. Those are soft moments, for example, which I think, for me, separates your Dwayne from Ulands from everybody else because, you know, those are the mistakes that your best players in the world don't make, and that's what he needs to start, you know, working on. But I thought it was a much better performance than, um, than we have seen from him in, in, a, in a Bok jersey. He's going to have an opportunity against uh, Ireland. You know, he will have the number eight mm. jersey. So I think you'll hopefully he'll take a lot of confidence out of that. Um, there's definitely areas where he needs to improve, but give him a bit of space and a ball in hand, and he's devastating. Um, and the box need to try and find a way to do that against Ireland because, you know, there's no point having him in number eight and not playing to his strengths. Yes, he'll need to mm. adapt to the mm. Bok system but also let's find a way of un unlocking the evan ruiz that Leon won Carey. the the, yeah. the the urc play of the year two years ago exactly exactly apelele fassi um yellow card a little kung fu kick um as he was taking his flawless high balls stevie yes. so look rusty rusty made an interesting point saying without trying to take anything away he wasn't under pressure for a lot of the kicks which he mm. wasn't, and it's fair. But at the end of the day, you you know, you, it's not his fault that he wasn't being put under more pressure. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, up later, fussy. yeah you, you did know. not get contested. That was rubbish of you. Yeah. What the hell so, were you thinking? He didn't put a foot wrong. <laughs> um, I do think he was lucky, and I've got a lot of criticism for this. I do think he's lucky. I think that the more you look at that, his leg comes up at a very weird time. You look at where his eyes are, for example, and it's also a technique issue because if you watch he, the, he was going in similarly with that swivel preview the does do towards it. the yeah. player so it's going to get him in trouble that's why like when people are saying oh but he was off balance no because it's not an isolated incident mm -hmm. you know it is the you way do, he does it so he has to, if he, he had has, the tmo he that yeah and if he had the tmo the tmo is oh not the tmo the the, the linesman is actually advising against the the referee um, against the card at all, and actually saying it was a complete, it was a rugby incident. Um, I think it was the right call in the end. You know, it, 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 clearly not purposeful and all malicious. Which, yeah. but 
It's one and, and it's one of those that you don't see often. I remember if you go back a couple of years, we saw Joy Barrett. Seen, we have seen a couple of red in cars Super Rugby, yeah, and he got and a that was an, But that was an ugly one. That was yeah. in boot in face. You know, yeah. lucky this one, lower neck, like more collarbone region, but definitely one to look at technique wise. But listen, if you're catching it, that's the fundamental thing. Yeah, and so he that's, did that that's flawlessly. The, you know, the fact- the fact that he's catching it is the main thing. I don't think it's difficult to to tweak the technique so he doesn't get into trouble with that again. Um, mm. You know, it's he's been retained by the squad, so the the, the box two obviously yeah. rates him. Um, yeah. I don't think we'll see him against Ireland. I mean, but I think we'll see him against uh, Portugal. So um, it, for me, a, a successful return to life in, in the Springbok jersey for him. Absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised when you saw him in the camp to be one of those that didn't make it to to the next round. Um, just because he hasn't been able to take his opportunities previously wearing the Springbok jersey, but he absolutely did this weekend. So well done, Apelele. Let's quickly touch on Ben, Jason, Dixon, and Kunu. Um, I think for me, you know, kind of job done, I guess. Yeah, I Didn't mean, re- for instance, Kunu, not much to do for him. Um, I think that he'll be a bit of a bit part player. He's already been sort of dropped down to the um, the, the standby list. Gerard um, mm. Senecam's got the kind of the run in there. Um, and BJ Sticks for me look comfortable at test level as I thought he would be. Um, I can understand why it's it's a very unpopular decision. But I can understand why the box have him in the squad ahead of an Albert Low. I think for me he just ticks everything that the box wow. want to see. Um, no, I do. I think I think I think we you know we talk about the box don't pick the best players; they pick the right players. Um, and I think he is in the, the Springbok mold to a T. Um, he doesn't miss tackles. Um, very very physical. Um, very hard worker from a, hitting his racks and stuff like that. You know, he doesn't have the same ball carrying prowess as an Ulrich Lowe, but I think that's Peter Steph Toy doesn't have a ball carrying prowess, yeah. for example. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> we've we've never had a genuine place for Peter Steph the Toy. He's our genuine replacement for Peter Steph the Toy, yeah. and he looked looked very comfortable. Very tough for him. I'm a big fan of him, so so long may that continue. Well, Stevie, that's a good segue into this thirty nine man squad for the Island series and Let's just touch on a on a couple things first. We're not going to go through, I mean, the whole list because I don't think that means much to to anyone. No one can retain thirty nine people in the head. Never mind nine. Um, That's the but, fourteen like extra list and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the big one is no captain named Stevie. Yeah, that's Jess. I'm ch- I'm I'm, I'm chatting to Ulm Rassi tomorrow. There's a press conference, so you can be sure that I will be asking what the situation is there. He did say in the last press conference that he will be announcing a permanent captain. Um so obviously it's not come out with the squad, whether it'll come out tomorrow, whether it'll come out next week. Mm. Um what's interesting is before Sia was made captain, I remember Irvin actually captaining the box for a couple games and but it wasn't like a, a book and captain announcement. Yeah. I wonder if, I mean, I don't understand why, but maybe it's Eben coming in. Eben's just the obvious choice, right? He, if we want to have a South African based captain, yeah. he is, for me, he, he he's the most likely to be at the next World Cup with experience as a captain at, at both clubs and, and, and country level. Guaranteed starter, you know, yeah. w- came second, I think, in the World Rugby Player of the Year. I think I'm right in uh, saying. I don't know if they announced it second, but yeah, it was, it was well nominated but, for it. Yes, and and ticks as many boxes. I mean, personally, my personal opinion is actually keeps here, and I think that might be controversial to a lot of people. But I think because if you honest. change, you change. Everyone says you change the. You know, you're setting a precedent now for for in the future. Now the Springbok captain is just going to go overseas, and it doesn't matter. Okay, I don't mind if a Springbok captain goes overseas after winning two back-to-back World Cups. Yeah, let the them go. And a British That is the precedent. So if that's if that's if that's if that's the yeah, I'm right, totally listen, fine with it. Yeah, if if they're sitting down tomorrow and say, "All right, listen, um, Sal Murat, we are making you the next Springbok captain. You're more than welcome to play outside once you've won the 2027 and 2031 World Cup, as well as the British Irish Lions series. Then you can go and play your rugby for um, you know in Japan. Yeah, I just think Sia makes sense. He. He is the lifeblood of this team. He, I mean, you should have seen the stadium when yeah. he just got put on camera for about two seconds. He he actually an- ignored the camera because Jordan Hendricks was, line- was lining up a kick from 40 meters away. He yeah. had to play it down. And it's like, you can't express, you know, this is just from a fan experience. Uh, but, um, I mean, you you, know, you were there. You were you were there in um, in Marseille even during the World Cup, and when they go, when they, when they announced the the the, the players. It's... And 
I mean, every single time you hear Sia Khaleesi's name being mentioned, it is it's it's difficult to to convey just how loud, mm. how many, how much people absolutely love it. It's bad. I always find that that whole announcing players thing very interesting to hear the fan yeah, favorites. Yeah, same to me. Michael Zulman Pimpy must be one of the most popular Springboks mm, of all time. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and also adding to his try record, what a game he had, by the way. Jeepers, I mean, it doesn't matter when we have wing injuries, as many as we have mm. had. You just look at our depth, and oh, he's just so good. But uh, completely, Stevie, I, I mean, the only person for me who could even live up to that could be Etzebeth. I mean, he's gained a lot of public favor in the last, you know, five years. He, he, you know, everyone knows that, and everyone knows that him and C are incredibly close, which helps with that transition if there were to be one. Um, so for me, it's it's between them two. Um, if you if Rassi is you know keeping a, a hard nose by that South Africa has to have a captain that plays in South Africa, go for it, Beth. Otherwise, keep Sia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other options that will uh, I mean, Peter Steph's toys up there. Bongi Manambi has been mentioned as, op- as other options there. I don't but think there's anybody. Peter Steph's playing really. in Japan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it, you know, if he does break the rule, for example, um, then then yeah. Peter Steph's toy can come into it. But I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's too many other options. To be fair, and we all know it will be a Ford, for example. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the the big thing for me, looking at the squad, as we mentioned, Jasper Visa is included, despite the fact that he basically won't be playing <laughs> until about mid August. Um, I think that's because Jasper Visa sold all his homes in SA. <laughs> Um, I think he sold the farm, and so it's like, so yeah, so he phoned us and said, "Listen, I'm not part of the squad. Like, I'm squatting out here, dude." So I'm gonna go just... back to Leicester. <laughs> yeah. Leicester, but sorry. You got two options: I either stay in London or you just throw me on that squad, and I stay in the team hotel. So, good on, uh, good on, uh, on Jasper yeah. for, for being street, street smart bizarre. there. Um, definitely can't <laughs> afford an Airbnb with the pounds that he's been earning over the last few few years. Um, so that's a bit of a weird one. Uh, the big surprise is Jan Hendrik Vessels, who is the third choice hooker and the third choice loose head at the Bulls. Uh, or it could even be the fourth choice loose head. Barely played, actually hasn't played loose head this season. Being included despite Apparently what he can, though. Yeah, pay, yeah is... rumor has he played there at, at Schoolboy, which is basically <laughs> just an excuse to get him somewhere before they just give him the ball. I mean, he's unreal with ball in hand. He really is. We all know this. Um, for me, that's kind of where it stops. Um, I don't really particularly rate him as a hooker. I think his throwing is a bit uh, sketchy, and I don't think he's a particularly good scrummager. Um, I don't think we're going to see him in the next couple of tests. But this is a project, isn't it? This is this is this is Don Human and Rusty looking at a, a player and saying, "We reckon that player is going to be special. Therefore, we're going to yeah. put him in here, and we're going to turn him into something special." I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but was he in the match day squad for the Bulls in the URC? No. So no. why wasn't he in the squad up until now? Why wasn't he well, with, like, was, bull, why wasn't he um, Pilon Gomede? Because uh, because the Bulls decide they didn't need a Pilon Gomede, whereas they potentially need him. I, that whole Gomede thing for the Bulls doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. There's a lot. Yeah. Something must have happened, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the question um, marks there. Big, you know, for example, marks. you can sit there and tell me that oh, we wanted the experience in Nizam Car. Great. If in the injury in the warm-ups on Saturday, you know Nizam Car pulls his hamstring. Um, you're now going to have to go find some random to you, to play at, at flag. And, oh, you know, well, we didn't actually need a Peter Gomedi. No nonsense. He was never in the frame to play. It's the only reason he would have been released to the box. Yeah. No, it, it, it is very, very bizarre. Um, but let's move on, Stevie. Once again, just like the World Cup, four scrum offs. Faf, um, Mornay van der Berg, obviously your, your Lions mate, um, Grant Williams, and Kurt Schreiner. Yeah, I mean, Kumar's run is an interesting one because he's obviously included, but um, not getting uh, any younger. younger. He's 34 <laughs> years old, um, so I don't think he makes them. I mean, maybe he can make the Expo Cup. I'm 38, he can. Um, but, I mean, he's always been the, the, the de facto starter if Fuff and uh, Jane Anderson haven't been has, has, on fit. Uh, he very rarely comes off the bench. Um, I think Mourinho van der Berg's going to play against Portugal. I, I mean, just from what I've seen in, in the box training, you know, every single time they're warming up, he's working with Zulia Stick. Um, I actually caught a bit of a glimpse of the training when I um, went to a Bulls press conference because it was at Loftus and they were training on the field. And uh, they were running and he was running at scrum off. I think they, I think they look at Mourinho van der Berg as a, as a genuine option. Um, so I think they've gone with the keeping the standard, you know, World Cup mm. options. Um, but I think that they look at him as the future of Scrum Half alongside yeah. a Grant Williams and a, and a Jaden Hendricks. Uh, I mean, he, he he is the full package. He just he looks very complete um, mm. from what we've seen of him at the Lions. Let's talk about those who were snubbed, Stevie. Um, the the one that a lot of people are speaking about is Volker Lowe, who didn't make it versus Thomas Toy, who did. And Thomas Detoy being really the only overseas player to 
burst back into a squad um, out of this. Obviously, there is no um, Augustus or Tyron Green. Neither of those two, to be fair, have made their debut versus Thomas Otoy, who's made it. And both World Cups, you know, he could be a double World Cup champion at this point if it weren't, you know, if he weren't a little bit yeah. unlucky. Uh, Jones, I think he won the 2019 World Cup. No, he did. He did. No, he he, did. he won the 29 World Cup, yeah. just missed out on the last one. Um, yeah. He, he, he's class and he plays he plays both sides um that for me was the that for me i, I think that is a very important point same with trevor and Yukani. people are asking why are you putting in trevor two things first of all we don't have steven kitzel i don't know if anybody else has realized that but we've only got you know we only <laughs> had two it, recognized new sets uh, and one of them was in Sukhumunu. so we need i think that at the moment oxen chair starts against ireland and we need uh, a replacement loose head i think it's one of trevor or thomas atoy thomas atoy mm. was one of the best players in the premiership this season yeah. Um, helped to turn that bar side into what they were. And it was part of the box squad a year ago. He's been part of this box squad for a long time. This box squad management do not drop players randomly. In fact, the only player actually who's not been called back up um, that's not either injured or retired, I believe, is Marvin Ori. Everybody else has either been recalled or they're injured or they've retired. So hmm. this box management doesn't just drop players. They don't just leave players out. Um, so Thomas has been Free, there in those environment. Well. Dion Free, yeah. I, I don't think he's officially retired, but I mean, you can understand. I mean, there's yeah. there's there's bringing back two players, and then there's bringing back uh, Dion Free, who's yeah, yeah got another yeah, year maybe two anyway. Um, so I don't think it's a, that big of a. I think it was a fifty fifty call, and I think they're going to win it with the experience of Thomas Toy and somebody who can yeah. play at uh, at Lucid. Volko Lowe will play for the Springboks. Trevor Yukon has mm. got one or two years left. Franz Mahoub is not getting any younger. Volko Lowe has got years in him. He will play. So I don't think it's mm. too much of a uh, of a surprise. Um, yeah. I, I'm quite happy with it. To be fair, he's a, he's, a, he's in the reserve list, so he, by definition, he's on he's the going to be there. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he'll be there in in and around it. Um, our props are aging, so it will be interesting to see who that next generation is in the coming years. Let's quickly just touch on the injuries so that um, people know that they haven't been left out. Cameron Hanekom picking up an injury. Henko von Weck. Um, Luit de Jager, unfortunately, is still, still injured. He played um, in, in Japan um, post-World Cup, but unfortunately now again for Springbok window injured. Stephen Kitsoff having not played for Ulster for the last couple of months. Kenan Moody um, missing both the semi-final and final for the Bulls. Damon Villenser just received surgery on his finger, I believe. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually look too bad. I, mean, I wonder if you might just see him in the rugby championship. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's not like he doesn't have a cast or anything. He's just got a, it's just stitches really. So I think it'll be about getting that sort of, that dexterity back into his thumb. But mm. nothing too serious. Mm. I hope we might see him sooner rather than later. Yeah, and and then last one is, is Jean Klein, um for for Munster. So the, the, those so are the... bleak actually for Jean Klein because imagine Jean Klein fronting up in front of Ireland for two games, dude. Yeah, it's true. It's a it's a good story and a story worth telling. He that's my only actually complaint about chasing the sun too. If we take our yeah, we didn't, a little bit back there, was that they we didn't we get, did not didn't report get the Jean Klein story. story. I know we should have got that Jean Klein story. Listen, maybe he sticks around for another World Cup and then we get the Jean Klein story. You know what? We maybe just we need just a, take this to we, our we own hands win a world cup in between now and then so let's just uh-huh. do from clover to sun you know like the john clay <laughs> story chasing the clover there um we go. yeah stevie enough of the spring box let's go into the urc uh bulls versus mm. glasgow warriors glasgow warriors not given a sniff or not given a chance by all the fans um 13 nil down i believe and I, I mean i had this on the laptop whilst i was watching the barbarians so i was yeah, you know, in between in between places as it were but huge second half effort that's why it's just getting a try before half time and then blowing bulls out the water really um for what seemed like a bit of an unimaginative attack from them without philly larue and going down 21 points to 16. yeah listen it's not too many teams that you watch bully the bulls and they were bullied um you had mark i mean i was watching mark of starden nicknamed ESCOM, like bouncing off of tackles backwards. And like, the, 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 the physicality on display from Glasgow was mm. immense. That Andy, loose trio, Bulls, Bulls 41 missed tackles, Glasgow mm. 16. Yeah, no, they, they just decided, they just rocked him and thought, you know, if we, do, if we, we we've got a tackle, like our lives depend on it and, and we win this game. It was, it was incredibly, it was impressive to watch, to be perfectly honest. As much as I'd love to have seen Bulls go on and, and get the victory, you watch that performance and you think, uh, you can't, not admire mm. the performance from Glasgow. Um, and, and I'll tell you what, there was a moment where Bulls lost it. 
and Cameron Harnacombe and Sina Topolato had a bit of a, a, a scuffle on the ground. And Cameron Harnacombe did the standard, like, I'm watching you, like, come here, like, let's do it. And, and Topolato just laughed it off. And I watched that going, that's it. That's it. There it is. <laughs> when, you see those, when you see those moments, and uh, Topolato, who also who had a fantastic game, by the way, uh, when you see those, when you see one He's player who's saying, come at me, and the other one who's significantly smaller laughing at him, you're going, mm. Mm, mm, mm. that sort of shows you that the, the Glasgow, Glasgow always had the belief. And I think that, yeah. was, that, was, that was the main thing in the end. And, and first off, that's what it takes. The only way of beating this bull side was to front up physically. You are up against it. You know you're up against mm. it. And you have to want it more than them. And I do think that the Bulls were, we saw a little bit of what happened to the um, Boca versus England in that semi-final, that emotional draining, having beaten like the team of the tournament in Leicester in the semi-final and having to pick themselves back up and what everyone else told them was a Leicester opposition. And whatever you say um, about, you know, trying to ignore external um, noises, you internalize that. And you hear everyone telling them that this weekend is going to be not as big of a challenge as last weekend was. And if you won last weekend pretty convincingly, as everyone said, then why wouldn't you win this weekend? And and to an extent, I think it was that. And then the next big one for me, as mentioned earlier, Vili LaRue. Massive, massive miss. Look, I mean, Devin Williams had a great game as well. You know, this is not too... It's, uh, I mean, he, I thought he was actually really, really good. Very different player, though, completely. Mm, um, mm. You know, very good counter-attacking player. Plenty of pace. And doesn't just... Yeah. You know, they just... They missed no, that he's playmaker. Um, Nothing against Devin Williams at all. No. It's but, just... Does he... Is he the puppet master that Vili Roo is? It's the Villy same, it's the same no. thing. The issue we had in the box, though. It's the same thing, you know. Damien Williams... You had this issue where you wanted to play Damien Williams at 15, but you lose out on the creativity of Vili Roo. And mm. Damien Williams has had to has had to add that part of his game, but at the same time, that's why Mike Leibach has unlocked Damien Williams because he's, you've taken away that responsibility. So mm. it's it's nothing against anybody that plays. Billy Lewis is a very unique player. Um, I, first, I think two things I want to sort of raise. First of all, I think Jake White talking about the referee at the end of the game was very very poor. Uh, yeah. A lot of it that he was it's, sort it's of that dismissing. ugly side of Jake White that exists within him now. It's it's, it's it was two not, things with the referee chat, and it was talking about you know. The, the the Scottish internationals and how they can't compete because you know they don't know the depth and they don't know the depth but as a Lions fan I don't exactly look at the Bulls and think oh you're a shame man they really don't have quality they've only got yeah. Van der Merwe coming yeah, off yeah. the bench they've only got the Scotland capped Jakob van der Vaart in the system that doesn't play they've they only also just have decided... the whole Springbok back three they just you know a couple of them and, they were they were injured two of three of and them Johan were injured Kloster, so he... who is a Springbok in the past and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they've got Mark of a start in that pack next to Albert Lowe he's going to play for the Springboks and Cameron Honeycomb is going to play for the Springboks no, they, they're Kier, just fine he is a Springbok they're they, just they, fine they were, they've got a good squad they've probably got the second best squad in the country um, so yeah and the, uh, <laughs> one thing I would like to just shout out though the piss take of Glasgow Warriors and the way they celebrated that final that, yeah, whole, that photo with the, what, um, the, the, does the, the altitude, altitude, altitude doesn't yeah. matter. I love that. I absolutely love that. You, know? and, you and, have to, and you have to give you them that, right? Yeah, you, you how often are you winning tournaments, let alone away, you know, to the yeah. Bulls when everyone writes you off? And fair play to Glasgow Warriors, probably, I think it was like a 1% chance of winning um, as, as they went into the um, knockout stages, you know, beating Stormers at home, which at the point, I think everyone was kind of pipping Stormers to win that. Storm, yep. you know, Put them aside, beating Munster away. No one gave them a chance in that. And we speak about like championship winning teams. They nullify that Munster team into like they just had nothing in them to give. Yeah. The exact same for the Bulls. The Bulls have been very creative, very high scoring team. Just nullified that attack. And um, you have to say they deserve it. And now the URC has a South African winner in the Stormers, an Irish winner in Munster, and a Scottish winner in Glasgow Warriors. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And I think it's I think it's unreal. What what a league. Correct. And uh, shout out to Ryan Wilson as well, who I think is still drinking brandy <laughs> in Pretoria and is still going on his, his like four-day bender. Um, yeah, Oaks is saying he's pulling a John Terry with the full kit wanker. He thinks he's still a player, bro. Yeah. In, in fact, to be fair, yeah, well, <laughs> he's, he was about to walk onto that stand and take his medal. But I look to be fair, <laughs> though, he's, a, he's a legend. Uh, so, but, and, and I love seeing unashamed, like... Well, we, I just we just we just won the competition. I'm going to celebrate yeah. with the lads. I can say whatever I want now because next season it doesn't matter because I've won this season. Yeah, yeah. Even even if he's been long long retired, but um, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, good, good. it was great. Fair enough. That, that, that I think they're still on a bender. To be fair, um, Stevie. Speaking of finals, let's quickly touch on Super Rugby Pacific, and it was 
the Blues, who um, smashed the Chiefs 41 points to 10. Chiefs not really getting a sniff in. Um, their first Super Rugby title in 21 years. Just a bit of history, and I must um, thank MB5 Plug on Twitter um, for this one. But just to, in, in a quote, in 1996, Aroni Clark scored for the Blues as they beat the Sharks to win their first Super Rugby title. 28 years later, Caleb Clark scores a hat-trick in the final. Some things are meant to be, call it destiny, and... Unbelievable hat-trick from Caleb Clark. A really good season for him coming back. And um, it'll be interesting to see if he makes it into this New Zealand squad, which has recently been announced. Um, but Stevie, I want to get your thoughts quickly on Rika Ioani's quote. Yeah. Mentioning a super rugby title above a World Cup because of how much I love the city, how much I love this club, um, how much I've admired this club, he told Radio New Zealand. I can see what he's trying to say, and you know, it's, he's, he's been asked, you know, does this, does this? I think, I think, I don't know what the, his question. I'd imagine he's been asked, you know, does this make up for the World Cup? And he's basically gone and said, oh no, mm-hmm. you know, this means so much more to me. Yeah, nice try. At the end of the day, he wouldn't have sat there with the weightlifters in one hand and the Super Rugby in the other hand, going, "This is the one." They're like, I expect it to my house, <laughs> and I'm defending it. I'm, I'm handing over the weightlifters to say, "Here, you guys take this one," because I want to keep the Super Rugby Pacific as well. By the way, yeah. you know, it's, it's come on. Nice try, Rico. Um, yeah. But no, agreed. I think I think it's like it's half of it's out of context. It's, it's half of it is like burying a little bit of hurt. Yeah. Um, let's quickly touch on the New Zealand squad, Stevie. And big one is that Scott Barrett has been named captain ahead of Ardi Sevier. Um, and as Ardi and Jordy have been named vice captains. What are your thoughts there? Because personally, as if I could pick one person to play for the Springboks that doesn't represent South Africa, it would be Ardi Sevier. Because I'm such an Ardi Sevier fan. So yeah, I'm gutted. I- for him yeah and i think he'll be upset as well i think there's also a certain amount of i mean for example i had uh, i disagreed with uh, lima superwaga's assessment when he said how does the best player in the world because that's what he won last year not become the captain your best player is not always captain i think it's no, the big no, thing that, for me that, that's, so i think that's, that's not that's logic. simplistic yeah. um i don't mind it. i'm not overly surprised scott robertson doesn't know Ali Sevier like he knows a, and, a scott barrett and, and you know, speaking of which we're seeing crusaders nepotism no. Yes, I don't know. I said again, people are like, oh, there's too many crusaders. guys. What what are people expecting? Like, uh, he's oh, one oh, oh, I disagree. I think I no. think I I I mean, he's it's it's very it's interesting because it reminds me of a little bit of like a like a, a Heineken Mayer where the Springboks became the Bulls, and the Springboks aren't the Bulls. The Springboks are the Springboks, and the All Blacks are the All Blacks. The All Blacks are not the Crusaders. You should be picking your your um, All Blacks team. I mean, he's left out Hoskins Satutu, arguably yeah. the best loose forward in the whole Super Rugby Pacific, because he doesn't necessarily see his worth in his system, but he hasn't given him the chance to see him in the system. Two things. First of all, it's his first squad he's ever named. So... First of all, things will change. Look, the Hoskins Institute one is wild, and that's the one that everybody's talking about. Um, I think it was always going to be a Crusaders bias. This guy's won, what, four or five Super Rugby titles with them. It's his first ever Super Rugby. Yeah. Yeah, first first ever New Zealand squad. He's picked, he's not just picked Crusaders players, he's picked players he knows, picked players he trusts. He's got, you know, if he's not implementing a system and you go and bring in players that you know. For example, Rusty Erasmus elected Sia Khaleesi as captain. Rusty Erasmus knew Sia Khaleesi backwards. When he made mm. that decision, he went and found someone that he, is, yeah. yeah, and 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 had a lot of history there. Uh, so I think it's it's very natural. I mean, Steve Borthwick, for example, is, you know, was is, is I think was as well. You know, picked a couple of players who some people might say they're going, oh, should it be? But at the end of the day, you've got a style of play, you've got a system you want to play, and you're gonna you're always going to gravitate towards players you know and players you trust. It's a bit like the box not picking players outside the squad. You know, they've kind of put together the squad and they're like okay well these are my guys you know and all of a sudden it doesn't matter that yeah. that certain that uh, low has a sensational season they're not going to drop their guys for him so look i think at the end of the day it's his first squad he's gonna, it's his first few games over here things will change but he also i think is very aware that new zealand and all blacks are expecting look at what happened to ian foster he had one bad season and everybody wants him out he got to a world cup final you know, so I think he's also very aware that the expect, expectation is that New Zealand will run out next week and be world beaters, that they will beat South Africa, mm. that they'll be back to the greatness that they are overnight. 
And so I think he's gone with the safe option of bringing in players he knows, players he understands, and because I think that that is going to be the quickest way for him to to get to the highest level that he believes he can be right now, and then probably look to try and bring more players in the future as they sort of then build on that. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like questioning Springbok squad selections. Like, these guys, they, you have no reason, their record doesn't give you a reason to disagree with what they've done. But it's just confusing as hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, why? Like, you, it's hard to logically understand it. But, I mean, we don't know Razor as an international coach. It's going to be very interesting to see this England series. England um, on the rise recently. Obviously, blowout win versus Japan. Um, it'll be interesting to see if England get a sniff in versus them. Um, you know, big, big rebuild um, from them. Obviously, beat Ireland in the Six Nations. But, yeah, I think I just think that's a 2-2 shot. Is, is wild. I can understand Scott Barrett more than I can understand the strategic shot. But yeah, Stevie, so let's not I. go any further into this because this isn't actually just a rugby podcast. It is a um, rugby football and cricket podcast as well he says, as... He says other... 45 minutes into the rugby chat. By the way, it's yeah. actually not just about rugby. Yeah, and we even said it before the show. We can't spend too much time on rugby, yet here we are. But let's move into the Euros. Stevie, um, talk to me. Who is going to face England up until the semi-finals because as it currently stands, Portugal, France, Germany are all on one side of the draw and if England win tonight, then they will be on their own on the other. Yeah, well, England have to learn to freaking score a goal. It's half-time and nil-nil, so... We do come to right. get used to that. Um, but, yeah. Um, it's a bit, It's been an interesting year. I, I felt that um, a lot of teams who we felt were favourites um, have not necessarily pitched up. I mean, Germany being held by Switzerland um, was mm. a very was a very interesting to game fair, itself. I think the Swiss, Swiss have been good. I don't think Germany have been bad. No, no. In fact, I've, I've, Germany for me has been one of the teams that have impressed me the most. Germany and Spain probably have been, for me, the two most impressive mm. sides. Portugal, though, very quietly just got under the radar, which is weird for a team that won the Euros not so long ago. Um, yeah. You know, they... they two tournaments ago. Yeah, they they very quietly just sort of gone about their business very very well, very comfortably. Never really looked um, out of sorts actually. Um, so I think I think Portugal remained dark horses, which is weird to call the former champions, but they kind of always never really rated as a number one side. Italy getting mm. lucky last last night um, against Croatia it was like yeah. heartbreaking yeah, for uh, Luka Modric. Um, and then France today, I watched France today and I looked at that team sheet, I looked at the bench and I thought that is absolutely disgusting and they couldn't be Poland who, yeah. you know, are really not a strong squad. If we, no. you know, it's the nice players on the first side, I was very impressed with a couple of youngsters but I mean, they can get a teenager, they're like a 22-year-old player to yeah. they're such a young side and France, at the moment, has scored two goals this tournament and conceded one. So, it's not been a particularly high scoring Euros. You know, we've, no. we've seen very few sort of three nils or three ones, or I don't think, I think we've only seen yeah. two teams hit more than three goals. Particularly from the two favourites in England and, and France, right? They were the two teams that everyone was mentioning going into this. Obviously, Germany, a little bit with, with hosting the tournament. But, you know, the French and the English squads are the most stacked. I think everyone can agree on that. Yeah. But no goals, largely from both. I think they both scored two goals. Um, in the tournament so far so um, kind of these resting giants that you're looking at um, so it'll be interesting to see that Stevie I, I have a frustration and it, and it extends to, to, the, to the cricketing landscape and, and it's that the accommodation of too many teams is ruining tournaments and I understand well, for cricket's aspect, let's, let's just get that out of the way. It's for growing the game and stuff like that. Very different to football. Football, it's purely monetary. It's just yep. like, how, can we can we host more games, more viewers, more sponsorship money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you have, what that means is that you have fewer um, games that have that real jeopardy. You have teams who are now winning games in the last minute of the game, if you think about Hungary, and now maybe getting through to the next stage, maybe not. That uncertainty as a fan is leaves you in a, a space where you aren't as gripped to the current game you are watching right in front of you. So as it stands, it should have been a massive groundbreaking story that Austria have beaten Netherlands and Netherlands are out of the Euros. Netherlands are incredibly, they've been a strong squad and actually started really well. 
But now we're speaking about them. Oh, they're probably going to get through. You no, know, they, they are through, basically. Points. I mean, they're, 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 they're the top of the third place teams. They're the only one in that, that fall with four points. So it's very, just, they're basically through. And we see it in the same, and, and, and this format is not that it's the exact same format, but this extent, the, the, the increase in the amount of games is extended to the Champions League next season and it's the exact same reason but you're gonna again you're gonna have fewer games that mean less and i just think as a fan watching it it's just not as fun we're kind of waiting for the whole time for the knockout stages because the group stages even if a team loses it's like oh they, they can get through because they are kind of only need to perform in one game in yeah, the whole I mean, group the fact that hungary have lost two games one one and at this stage would go through like, and that's a one 0 win in extra time. It's like yeah, and and you're through it, to the next round. What is the point? It's not of winning because it's not because games? you're one of the top two teams in your group either. If no. you're one of the top two teams in your group, and that's the case, cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, if, it's, it's if it's just that close of a group, I mean, look at Group F for example, or Group E. I think with Belgium, where it's four teams all on three points after you know all one one, all um, all lost one. That's mm-hmm. fine. That's one thing. But for Hungary to be going through with you know a win with one win. Is is a bit child. No, I agree with you. I think that it's we're watering it down. Um, I want to see those early knockouts. Um, mm, mm. You know, I want to see, you know, Croatia, for example. You know, going out for me, that's a big story. You know, Modric crying after his emotion story. stuff like that. That's a big story. Um, they got but two it's only draws because they've lost. been that bad. It's, it's, they, yeah. They've been that bad that they've only got two points out of their three games. It yeah, had exactly. to be that bad for a big team to be knocked out, and they're only big team really so far to be knocked out. And the point is, we don't know. You know half more than half of um you know the teams have finished all the group stages games and we only know like a handful of teams yeah. that have actually been knocked out which is just it's just a bit bizarre to me um but you know some big fixtures you know to to um line up next week the only round of 16 that's actually confirmed so far switzerland italy struggling italy versus a big um switzerland um so um, it'll be interesting to see who fills in to to add to the Austria, Portugal, France, Spain, Ger- and Germany, um, and and who will you know finish up those matchups. Yeah, I think it's I, 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 I think it's the sides of team. I think there could be a couple of shocks. I think Austria have been playing very very well. Been very impressed yeah. with how organised they've been under Ralph Rangnick. Um, he's having a bit of a redemption arc over here, showing that he's not just a director of football. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm very keen for the round of 16 because I think that we're going to get some decent. I think there will be a couple of teams there that probably shouldn't be there. Um, but I think that the, the fact that that draw has, I mean, Spain, Germany, Portugal, one of them will go out or um, in the um, in, in the quarterfinals, and, and none of those three can make. And only one of those three can make the the and France and can make the. Um, the finals, so it's going to be mental. I mean, those yeah. quarterfinals are going to be. I mean, Any of Portugal. those teams could be a final matchup. Yeah, so it's it's going to be very cool from that perspective. Um, but yeah, I do think there are far too many teams. Um, but but we all, what we all can know we do? We is, don't make these decisions, unfortunately. No, exactly. The World Cup is going to be about a hundred teams, but at the way they're going to have it, probably hosting Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. Um, and speaking of World Cups. Let's move on to the cricket, Stevie. And the Proteas are in another semi-final against the odds. We are unbeaten. Huge. And you are the one who's gone through all the... Sat through the ghost hours. Mm-hmm. I am not quite the super fan you are. I wish I could say I was. But I will be going forward. Classic. Um, now that we yeah. have the, the real knockouts. We, we've had to, what's felt like... Had to go through five phases. It's only been two. But it's felt like five, based on you know the amount of hard palpitations I've gone through throughout it. Um, but we are there, top we four. We are there. It's not. It's not been easy. As I said, I'm yawning. I mean that. Yeah. I mean I've watched us play. Yeah, I've watched every single minute of the, of the campaign really, and it's been it's been such an interesting campaign because it's been so different to all previous campaigns because we haven't had. First of all, a lot of easy victories. I mean, 18 runs versus USA, 7 runs against yeah. England, 3 wickets versus West Indies. We made all of it look very tough. I mean, the way we bowled against the West Indies was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but it does... Uh, it's, a, it's a horrible thing to put in the universe. This does feel different uh, than previous World mm-hmm, Cups mm-hmm, because we're mm-hmm. not coming into it with a... Um, oh, Cody Maine is coming on for England. My day has just been made. We're winning <laughs> the World Cup. We're winning the World Cup. Cody Maine is playing for England. <laughs> The box are going, you know, Stevie, you just against ruined Ireland. a short. Carry on now. <laughs> we'll get back to the clip there. Um, no, I think, I think, I think it does feel different here for for the um, for the Proteas because 
we've had World Cups where we've come in with a, an Amy de Villiers and a, a Dale Stane, Hashim Amla, and we've and we've gone out at the first hurdle. We've had World Cups where we've come in um, and had some massive results, and we've fallen at the first hurdle. You know, we've basically virtually played what was almost three knockout games. We've won every single one of those games. Everyone is chipping in. Tabay Shamsi was dropped, came in, man of the match performance. Match, yeah. People talked about Alan Nokia not being part of the, shouldn't he be part of the squad, has been one of our best bowlers. Mm, um, mm. You know, Quinton de Kock, everybody's saying, look at the form he showed during the IPL, look at the form he showed now, shouldn't yeah. be, and, look, and then look at the way he's, he's batting. Um, yeah. You know, the captaincy from Aiden Markham, he bowled four overs, he bowled himself four overs. Yeah, on the track. He, bought, he, he, he gave Kisura Bada a bowl for the first time in the 17th over. This has been your best bowler for how many years? Yeah. So we're making some brave calls. We're playing some very, very impressive cricket under pressure. Yeah. And uh, I also feel we've got a squad where if there's an injury tomorrow and Bartman has to play ahead of a batter, I'm not panicking. Of course. If there's an injury to batter and Ryan Rooks has to come in from the from the cold, he is coming from the cold. I think that's probably something we'd like to see him get an opportunity. But I mm. think he's got the quality. So mm. it's going to need a big, I, big, big effort. But I, I do. I've got. I'm just feeling very positive, which is a nice feeling to have. For sure, and you know, you you take a gander at the you know top wicket takers and the top run scorers of the tournament, and you don't see any South African players, and right. it's a bit bizarre. But you know who has been the number one in his position is I think Adam Markram. I think he's been the best captain at the World Cup, yeah. and he's made such bold decisions. It's interesting because we've had a very consistent team. A cup only bowlers changing in and out, and yeah, I don't think it's been more than. I don't think it's really been more than one change per game. So you're talking no. about a very consistent team, and but not necessarily being used, particularly obviously on the bowler side, in the same way. KG Rabada, we, we haven't got you know, very used to opening. Lineup. You know, like in like under nine cricket, where you used to say, "Right, here's the bag, here's the bowling lineup." Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's it's been so it's, it's we've been so fluid with how things. Button. Even the batting lineup, you know, we've seen Clarkson yeah. going up early, we've seen Miller going up early, which mm. hasn't really worked. Um, but they, they made making those decisions. decisions. You know, yeah. so it's nice to see that we are during the game. We've been very, uh, and Rob Walters has been criticised for being very uh, stubborn in the way he, he picks his team. I find the Rob Walters criticism a bit weird, given the fact that we I thought we were unbeaten well, in the last World Cup, <laughs> and I think we're overperforming in this World Cup. Um, so, yeah. but I think we're, we're Proteus fans would love to complain. To be fair, um, uh, how many decades of, of disappointment does that to to a fan yeah. base? But yeah, I think that for me is the exciting thing is the fact that we are being innovative we are trying things and uh yeah all the way all the way but Afghanistan yeah. are going to be tough this decide that beat australia very very uh, tough but the nice thing about in afghanistan and this is why i'm so tough with the priorities is that you don't feel with the priorities there's a single person that if they don't play well we're losing afghanistan are a side you yeah you put the stars off on their day and you can get into them well, this is this is exactly it, Stevie. And you know, in my my in depth analysis of this Afghanistan side, to you know, bring the listeners up to um, you know just a, a little preview of of this um, semi final that will be you know starting at a brightly two thirty in the morning South African time. Um, so you know, set your alarm clocks for Thursday morning because it's gonna you're gonna be up early. It's gonna be a long day. But the Afghan openers have been crucial 281 runs from Gerbaz topping the run scoring charts ahead of Travis Head and in third Zadran 229 runs both innings is versus Bangladesh and Australia I think they batted past the 10 over mark so big big partnerships and putting themselves in positions and to be fair a little bit different to um, T20 tournaments and something you wouldn't have seen necessarily at the IPL but not being pressured into going at 10 and over they clearly have an understanding of what they think is a pass score on the day and they play towards that because I think that typically when you see um, you know these teams that only set let's say 140 and your openers are batting for you know 12 overs you're gonna you're gonna be frustrated with them because they're not batting but they've stuck to that they've said runs on the board has been the biggest you know most difficult thing to chase in this World Cup and, and they've been hard to come by. So their opening stands, I mean, not a single batsman has scored 100 at the World Cup. And, you know, after seven games, the highest run scorer is 281. You know, if you compare that to the IPL, you know, he, he wouldn't be in the top 10 probably. So big two batsmen and then moving on to the bowlers in the top five, they have Faruqi, 
Russia Khan and Naveen Ulhaq all sitting there um, with 16, 14 and 13 wickets respectively. So two seamers and obviously Rashid Khan has been actually very handy with the bat towards the back end of the innings. Proper pinch hitter. Um, so they're a tough team to beat and you know they're not these aren't fluke wins they are played Australia who up until this point were the best team in the tournament until Afghanistan derailed them no I think it's a good side as I said you know it's it's if it's two things you know first of all it's a good side it's definitely the side you would want to play I mean I'm picking Afghanistan every day of the week before I'm playing Australia um but no, no they're, of course they're, <laughs> but they're but they're but they're also side that we can't roll our eyes at they are a good side the nice thing is though is that you'll be Rob Walters telling you or, or you know or um the bowling lineup and you'll be looking at that and um I think it's Sam Simons is our, is our bowling coach at the moment and they'll be saying you get that early wickets you know if mm, you see mm, a mm, an early, mm. you see a a, a Romelu Lukabaz go out in that first over for example you go ballistic. and Ibrahim Zadran goes out the next over you sit there going right what have you got? Let's get through you know, them now. I think, and yeah. I think that's what we did so well against West Indies is that those early wickets. I mean, Nicholas Pereira came out and we, and mm. we got him earlier. And you're sitting there going, I felt we didn't that's capitalize huge. like we maybe could have, but we took those big wickets early on. And from the from the get-go, West Indies were on the back foot. And I don't think they ever really recovered. They, they clawed themselves back into the game. And then eventually we got over the, the edge. Uh, shout out to Chris Robata mm. with the, the greatest cover drive of all time. Oh, Silky, but, Silky. Did you see his dad's tweet? Yeah, for all his the dad said, windows. "Yeah, shout out to all the broken windows. This one is worth it." I mean, every every cricketer or parent who has a a kid who, who's into cricket knows the the sound of that that broken window of the ball smashing <laughs> into it. Typically, the tennis ball. But yeah. Stevie, I want to tell you why this semi final is different. It's because when last did we play a semi-final where our opposition didn't have a South African that could spoil the show? A nah, long bloody rude. time they'll, ago. They'll, they'll, they'll be rude there, dude. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sure Afghanistan Rashid Khan's have grand nobody, or something. They have nobody with South African <laughs> heritage. You know, no New Zealander that's said over the pod, no um, Netherlands player. None of it. None of it, none of it, none of it. They can't no, disrupt no, no, our no. flow. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a very, it's a very good point, um, actually. The nice thing as well is, uh, and I threw this out there, and, and I was taken apart by Mister Vetti. So every, if you follow her on Twitter, make sure you go and do because he gives you a lot of in, insight. Um, Afghanistan have drawn with India, and they've beaten Australia, they've beaten England, they've beaten basically every single team at the World Cup that they've played. Guess you the one team at the World Cup that's currently played that they have never ever beaten or drawn in their history. South Africa. Direct. We've never lost or drawn to Afghanistan. Well, shit. We better <laughs> keep that record. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, it's funny how we get that record, and that's like just like a heart sink. It's not like yeah, a fantastic. I don't know why you mentioned that. Dude. I don't like teams. that at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't like know, that at all. Only the approach is like, I mean, for example, if if you like the box and you're playing against like like one team, for example, that you always beat, and you get them in the semi-finals, you're like. Here we go. You get up the approach like, oh no, here it comes. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, here Why it are comes. you mentioning records that <laughs> haven't been broken, bro? We do, we meant to be at rock bottom. We are at rock bottom. Afghanistan are clear favourites. Everyone knows it. Yeah, it's spinning track. <laughs> they've got spinners. They've got Rashid Khan. We stand no chance. Look at the stats. Yeah, how many? What, no what did chance. we say? Five players all in those uh, those uh, yeah. those rankings. Yeah, exactly. Two of the five best batsmen. Three of the five best bowlers. It's it's yeah, it's, it's a no brainer, really. Um, Stevie, the one question. In what has been an otherwise very consistent lineup for the Proteas is Reza Hendricks. And it's starting to feel like that number one or that opening partner of um, Quinny's is a little bit cursed because we've seen Quinny with back to back great tournaments and last, last tournament, last T20 World Cup was Temba Bavuma who just couldn't get it going. Um, and we've seen the same for Reza, just not playing as well as everyone knows he can be. Do you think that? Rob Walters sticks with him, and you think Reza Hendricks deserves to have a bit of faith um, from Wal- Rob Walters? Well, I know that he will. Uh, he's come out and basically said as much. He said that you know Reza Hendricks is a world class player. He said he's got such good records in the playoffs, and that that scores around the corner. So we're not going to see a change. It will be Reza Hendricks on Thursday. Um, no, Re- Ryan Rickleton. I don't think we'll see Ryan Rickleton. Um, I would almost bet my house on it. I don't have a house, but my car on it. Um, <laughs> But so I, I, we won't see a change as far as I'm concerned. Um, you will back him. Should we should we change? I would have liked to have seen Rickleton. Um, and I was just so annoyed at four in the morning watching Reza Hendricks chase something down leg and get edged off. 
Yeah. And I'm sitting it's, there. Like, it's so mate, many silly neckoffs. He's playing hours. around the ball the, yeah, the, the like, whole time, missing straight ones. It's, it's, it's yeah. very, very uncharacteristic. And also, not I, I don't know, I have not enjoyed what I've seen from a, a body language point of view. For example, you know, it wasn't looking to try and score um, against England. It was just very. I mean, I think Reese Topley was like had an economy of about two after this first two overs in a T Twenty in the power play. Where you know you had to really re, the, the new form of the game is you go after mm-hmm. players in the power play. So I, what I want to see of Reese come out on Thursday is you've had a crap tournament. First of all, go prove us wrong. Thank you. But go mm. and be aggressive. Go and be positive. Go out there and yeah. say, shit, it's not working for me. What have you got to lose? Because honestly, I th- if I see him a top edge, two sixes in a row, and then get bowled for the third ball, and he goes for 12 or 3, go for 12 <laughs> or 3. Yeah. I'd rather you no. go for 12 or 3 than 10 or 20. You know, or 10 or 15. Agree. I completely agree. I think Reese is one of those players you can typically tell what type of energy he's going to have by the first six yeah. balls he faces. He's not like a Rassi van der Dissen who, you know, goes Slaggles, at about Slaggles, a run of ball Slaggles, for about 15 balls and then he catches up. Reza yeah. tends to not be able to catch up having gone behind. So go for it from ball one. No one is, you know, you know, you're not going to receive any praise or blame clearly from your coach. You've been given license. Yeah. Travis Head is making a career out of that approach. Travis Head just goes <laughs> yeah. out and says, yeah. it, whatever. Literally, he is the definition of, uh, yeah, fuck it. As is Quinny, as is Quinny de Kock. As yeah. is Quinny de Kock. You know, laissez faire. Just it kind of just it comes and it goes and we play cricket and we try to hit a ball. And, you know, the consequences, ah, you know, it is. So, I mean, listen, easy to say from, from an armchair, much more difficult when you are, you know, facing, you know, three of the five best tournaments at the bowlers at the tournament. But Correct. you know, let's. The point is, is that we, when he is selected, we have belief in him, and he can. We believe that he. We know what he's capable of, and we just want to see that unlocked. All right, up the Reza. up fully the behind him. Bloody Reza. let's go. Um, if you know Reza Hendrix, send this to him, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> And, I mean, Stevie, the big one, we, we touched on Adam Markham as the captain earlier. A massive stat. He has never lost a game as captain at the World Cups. Under-19 captain, 6 from 6, won the under 19 World Cup with KG Rubala. 2023 World Cup, he won 2 from 2 before Temple Vuma came back into the mix. And now at the World Cup, 7 from 7. You know, most... World Cups in, you know, a group stage format, you'd think, you know, seven wins from seven. Oh, that probably means you've won the tournament. No, we've still got no. another two to go. And it's not you because it's be, been round robin. You can be England and, win, and, and have won, what, four from seven and be in the flipping semifinals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really been... Duckworth Lewis stocks have never been higher. Yeah, they, correct. They, they are... Um, I've never seen... I've never heard it um, repeated as much as it is now. And yet we're still in the tournament. These things cannot haunt us now, Stevie. Um, yeah. You can guarantee it that I'll be up early, though. Yeah, two thirty. Well, we, no, no one thirty my time. You thirty. Yeah, two thirty your time. I'm gonna phone you. Make sure you're up. I don't want this, this bullshitting next next week of you having watched the live replay like ten hours later, then pretending like you went through the emotions. <laughs> I went through the emotions that you know, waiting as you open, you know, the tab in the morning, sort of the alarm, and looking at the notification. That is those seconds of the refresh button actually giving you a result are, are enough to just, I, it, it just brings back memories of, of Netherlands. And, and I, I put it out there, lit a, lit a couple of candles the night before, just, you know, in prayer. And it seems to have worked this time. I'm not going to leave it to prayer. I'm going to be watching. Right. Well, there we go. Cool. Well, looking forward to it, Dan. Um, maybe we'll do a little Instagram live on the, on the between two fans. Uh, um, yeah. Instagram account. You can sit the both of us in bed looking absolutely terrible. Just, Lamp base and Reza Hendrix because where's this form been as he bangs 100 or 20 balls? Yeah, no, exactly. And Stevie, it's come to um, that part of the show where we do a couple predictions. Let's start off with South Africa versus Afghanistan, as we've just spoken about. And I think we can probably do both of the semi finals given it's a World Cup. Um, there's also there's also very little sport to try and predict given the fact that there's no you i mean we've only got one euros match confirmed um for the weekend and there's no rugby that is true well we'll go on that you on euros match and two cricket matches how about that <laughs> yeah we're going about the only sport we know is confirmed for this weekend what's the horse racing look like <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly well let's start uh stevie south africa afghanistan um as mentioned uh early 
early, early in the morning. I think nine thirty local time. Um, how how do we fare? Have you, have you got a, a number in mind? We'll start with runs. I do. I do. Okay, I'm ready. When you are, you count us in. Okay, three, two, one. A pro tears by twelve. Twelve. Come on, the lads. I was gonna go bigger, you know. I was gonna go like twenty. I don't know why no, I went so far down. It, 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 I panicked so a little bit there. To go big, big with this, the way this tournament's gone. To be fair, um, yeah, mm. it was just almost just irresponsible. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go wickets. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Okay. I'll Three. count us in. Okay, I'll go for it. Okay. Three, two, one, four. Yeah. Yeah. And you were gonna go four. So I was about to go four. So, so I'll, I'll go five. Um, okay, you go five. Convincing. That might, yeah, that might be our biggest. That might be our biggest one of the tournament. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> At the end of the day, I, I will not apologize for backing my boys. I uh, not apologize, apologize for absolutely it. nobody. Um, Correct. Okay. Awesome. Uh, ma- ma- mammoth. Massive. Mammoth. Massive semi-final between India and England. I guess mm-hmm. more typical names you would have expected going into this World Cup being in, in a semi-final. England being defending champions. India with a point to prove having lost the um, you know 50 over World Cup final last year. Stevie, do you have a prediction in mind for runs in that one? I, I do. Okay. I will count us in. Three, two, one. 18 India. runs. India. Who are you going with? Yeah, yeah I was India, about to say. India, India, India. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Is that 18. Well, you haven't even said a team. I said 15. I said India by 15. Okay. Yeah, I said 18. Cool. Okay. Um, like, yeah. Then let's move on to um, wickets. Um, I'll count this in. Three, two, one, three. Ah, oh, okay. I'll move. Four. Okay. I don't think it's bad. Not pretty close. Fair. Pretty Pretty close, uh, but we've both gone the same same team. Well, so... at the end of the day, to be fair, this, we actually could we could probably just phone the right person and find exactly what the result is going to be, seeing as it's been completely <laughs> fixed and is already confirmed for the tournament where the venue is going to be um, at a time which is going to suit the Indian audience in the most spin friendly f- pitch of the tournament. But you know, yeah, it's that, funny. You know, it's, it's funny that it's it suits England neutral. and India. That they're not particularly powerful, strong cricketing boards in in the global scene. Well, it's, it's, to it's be fair to England, they didn't really have much of a say. If they if they just had different results and uh, top their group, they would have been in the other one. But India having their predetermined semi final venue as well as time is just phenomenal. Yeah, but anyway, no, let's not go into we, that. You, you do come BCCI, to expect it. I have, I have, I have powerful friends in powerful places. The next thing you know, I'm going to wake up to some BCI mafia in my room. <laughs> yeah, well, Stevie may or may not be at the next podcast. Yes. Um, okay, well, and then we're going to go with the only round of 16 game we know confirmed. And it's actually, it's quite an interesting one because it's Switzerland versus Italy. The defending champions versus the resurgent or the... the you know, a real surprise package that's been the Swiss who typically actually have been playing well um, at, at tournaments. I mean, Granit Xhaka becomes a different beast when it, when it seems that when he plays for Switzerland. So, Steve, have you got a score in mind for that fixture? I do indeed. Okay, well, so do I. Three, two, one. Two, one, one Switzerland. One, one. I'm going, I'm going one or Switzerland penalties. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, I, I, I genu- I, I'll be surprised if Italy beat them. They really looked bang average. Correct. I think that's just, like the bang, bang average is exactly how I could describe it. I watched them one way and I was just like, where's this Italian side gone? You yeah. know, I mean, just attacking wise, yeah. nothing. We've both given them a goal to be fair. So <laughs> not that bang average that, we, that they don't get a goal, but yeah. uh, that, that, that should be big. And I wouldn't be surprised if Switzerland even get past the round of 16 or the quarterfinals. I think they're, yeah. I think they're really, really good team to beat. Yeah. Up the Swiss. That wraps up the show for today. Phenomenal cool. stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, it's not just a, a Springbok podcast. We do other sports as well. We know our stuff around the other stuff as well. Maybe me more than you getting a couple more predictions, taking the lead to 11-10. Here we go. But, you know, we're alive and well. And there might not be rugby this weekend, but there's still a lot of sport. Well, there's, there's under 20 rugby, to be fair. The junior boxer flag. 
So uh, that, that, that continues oh, from on Saturday. 7 o'clock at oh, Fiji, Fiji, I think it is. So I'll have to go learn who all those players so are. If you want to watch, if you want to watch rugby in the po worst possible conditions, if you want to see kids fighting for their life as they sit at the bottom of a puddle in a Stellenbosch <laughs> field, then make sure you tune in every single year to watch the Under-20 Championships held in the worst possible conditions ever because of some reason that nobody's <laughs> ever explained once again the untrained championship is down in Stellenbosch during the rainy season it's going to be cold it's going to be wet it's going to be crap rugby every single team is going to look exactly the same because their kit's going to be brown off two yeah. seconds and um yeah so blame Stellenbosch over. mafia so bro blame Stellenbosch mafia meanwhile we've got Craven Week happening in the high fault on yellow grass fields with phenomenal rugby being played yeah that's so what the only it place is. that you can prove yourself bro so the only Correct. place I want to see is Springbok in, in his spot you know, at the end of the day, if you haven't played and Kimberly, you don't deserve to be called a rugby player. No, exactly. And and at, at some point in your career, you know, wear a cheetah's jersey. I don't care yeah. what level. Um, Correct. But we've got a break. We've got a great yeah, at least. Same there's thing. a bit of rugby. There's a bit of rugby. That's the point. Um, Stevie, this time next week, we could we'll be, be speaking World of final as champions. Champions. We're talking champions. Put it in the air. Light the candles, everyone at home. We need a collective yeah, al effort. Align your shockers or whatever has to happen for this to happen. You see, you, you know that sorted. C word that no one wants to mention. It's now standing for clutch. The clutch proteas. We're going yeah, to bring it home. Champions, this... flipping all of it, did. <laughs> That's it. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, wrap up the podcast. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, su share, subscribe, all the good things, and um. Tune in next week for when we will be um, lifting our own um, ICC trophy. I don't even know what the name of the, the T20 trophy yeah. is, but you know what anyway, it looks like to we be will fair. be championess. Um, Stevie, thank you very much. Have a good week and weekend, and we'll confirm 